did um I didn't click anything to get promoted, but uh it seems like it's okay. I didn't click anything yesterday either. Just wanna make sure it looks good on Bad Burn. Everything looks good on for my end for you? No. Okay. I didn't click anything, but I I didn't so you didn't have to you didn't have to like not click on Yeah, I don't that may be, yeah. Okay. Cool, thank you. Chris, have you seen uh, either of those? Either of those two? Have you seen the Mike Holder? Have you seen either Mike Holder quote in those? No. Took, they took took the options away. He th that's just what that's the number Scott gave me. He coached in those four. I think it can be. Who's right? He said what now? Yeah, that's what my team says, but I don't know. Could you actually? Yeah, I'll take both of you. Great. Oh, so wait, we are missing one. Oh. I know, but, oh, Luke, but but they told me verbally that there's going to be four. Hey, where, is Scott down there still? Hey, Scott.
podcast test. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for joining us today. Just quick reminders, just please have your cell phone silenced. When asking the question, please provide your first and last name and media affiliation. Please wait for the microphone. And recording of all press conferences on phones and cameras is prohibited. And for those joining on Zoom, we will try and get to you at the end here, but we will handle the questions here in the room first. We will have Illinois up first. We have about 40 minutes with the fight in Illini. Um, we will let the, it's going to start here about 2.50, about a minute or so. We will let the student athletes stick up here for about the first 20. So if you'd like to gear questions towards them initially, that'd be great. Uh, and then Coach um, Coach Underwood will be scheduled here at about 3.30. And then UConn will be up here from about 3.40 to 4.20. And same thing with the Husky student athletes. We're going to have them up here until about 4 o'clock. So if you can, try and gear questions towards them first. We'll have them here for the first 20 minutes. If you have any other questions, just let me know. Thank you. Keep an eye on me. I'll, I'll show you where to go. Thank you. Chris, you got the other one? Good afternoon, gents. Thank you for joining us. Coach, if you'd like to deliver an opening statement once you get settled, that'd be great. Thank you very much. We'll open up to questions after that. Yeah, I can't move. Well, obviously, obviously very excited to be uh, in the Elite Eight. Um, hard fought game last night uh, against a great Iowa State team. Um, I thought we, uh, we, we persevered and and um, found a way to, uh, to get here. Uh, excited about the opportunity to play the uh, defending national champions. Um, obviously, uh, uh, a very, very good basketball team. Danny's done a, uh, a terrific job. Um, but uh, uh, right where we wanted to be, uh, excited for the, for, the, for the challenge. Got a great group of guys uh, to my right and to my left that have uh, Performed all season. Uh, we're we're a we're a team that uh, uh, has has experienced many challenges. Uh, done a lot of really positive things. Won a Big Ten championship.
tournament. We feel like we're playing our best and uh, excited for the opportunity. Thank you, Coach. Questions here? We'll take one right in front. This is for Coleman and Ty. You guys haven't been an underdog all that often. Just how do you feel about that going up against the defending national champion going for a Final Four? Um, I feel like there's like no pressure on us. I feel like, um, you know, I feel like it's, you know, an, another game. Like just, you know, we're going to prepare the same way. We're going to practice the same way. We're going to go about film the same way. Um, so it, it's, it's no pressure for us. I feel, uh, I feel confident. I feel comfortable. Um, and yeah, it just, it feels like, uh, we got another game and we're grateful to be here. Uh, yeah, I agree with Coleman. I think, um, um, it's another game and, um, you know, we're, um, at the end of the day we have to be ourselves and, um, and come to play and, um, you know, step up to that table and just accept the challenge. Thanks, Wells. We'll take one right here. Go ahead. Front. Yeah, for Coleman and Marcus, uh, this team appears to be having a lot of fun playing basketball right now. Is, has it been an enjoyable ride going back to day one last summer, or were there some things the team had to had to fight through to to get to this point? Um, yeah, I mean, right now I think we're having a lot of fun. I think it's been really fun just enjoying winning, uh, the winning feeling, uh, the attention that's been brought to us. Um, and then the connection that we have and um, and then just being able to wake up and play basketball another day. Um, so I, I definitely think it's been a lot of fun. We have a fun group and we continue to have a lot of fun. So, uh, Yeah, I agree with Coleman. You know, it's, it's been a lot of fun. This, this ride has been a lot of fun, you know, just hanging out with our teammates on off the court, just, you know, everything that's a part of this. I think we just – are enjoying being here and when the times to lock in we lock in but you know I think it's just you know it's been a special ride and it's just been a lot of fun so far and we just we're not ready for it to end yet thanks Marcus right here in front yeah uh for Coleman and Marcus and maybe coach Adam Zagoria uh it's been about 25 years since the Big Ten has won a championship coach Izzo has said a couple times it's important you know for the league to get another one um do you think there's anything stylistically or strategically about Big Ten play that puts the teams in trouble in the tournament, and what would it mean to get one or two teams in the in the Final Four from the league this year? Hey, um, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily anything play style wise. You know, um, I haven't been in the in the league for twenty five years, but I've been here for three or four. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I just feel like. Um, the years I've been here, um, we've had some really good teams. Um, I feel like the years I've been here, we've probably been the best conference in the country. Um, and at the end of the day, like we've talked about, you know, those seedings don't matter. Um, it's whoever the best team is that night. Um, and, you know, I guess the Big Ten just has, hasn't had a team that has been able to go out and, and, and win um, six games in a row. So... Yeah, uh, you know, as far as the the twenty twenty five years, I think that's more of a question for him. You know, I've obviously been here one year, so uh, yeah, I don't know why they haven't. Um, you know, I think we have a really good team. You know, and so we're just looking to change that ourselves. Yeah, Adam, I think we had a the year we were one seed. I thought we were really good, um, and uh, had a bad day. Um, I can't speak to anybody else's. Uh, successes or disappointments in, in, the, in the tournament. But, uh, you know, I felt like that team had an opportunity to be as good as anybody. Uh, it's what makes this event so special is it's, it's, it's not a series, it's one game. And uh, if you don't play well, you go home. And, um, you know, that day Loyola was better than us. Um, you know, prior to that, uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, there's been a lot of good teams. It's been the best league in the country for, for a long time. It's very passionate, great coaches. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, it'd be nice. I think everything's cyclical a little bit. And, uh, you know, I, I, I hope we've got uh, multiple teams in it this year. Thank you. Right here in the middle. Uh, Trevor Haas with the Boston Globe. Question from Marcus and Quincy. Can you just speak to the, the advantages of having a lineup with L guys who are 6'6 six, six or taller, how that might help against UConn in particular with their length and athleticism as well? 
Yeah, uh, you know, UConn is a really good team, so I think our size and our versatility will really help us. Um, you know, they beat a lot of teams on, on the boards. They get a lot of second-chance points. So I think our size, you know, we just got to play really physical and keep them off the boards to give ourselves a better chance. Yeah, like Marcus just said, um, we have to be physical, um, use our size, especially um, on, the, on the rebounding uh, aspect of the game. Uh, they're a really good offensive uh, rebound team, uh, so we'll have to really match their physicality and uh, be uh, more physical than them. Thanks, guys. Back left here. Brad, Annie Costable from the Chicago Sun-Times. Um, what has your prep looked like in anticipation of, of playing UConn? And now that you know that you have them, how does it change? Well, it was early morning. And, and um, uh, you know, it, it's not overly complicated. They are who they are. We are who we are. Uh, it's a quick turn. Uh, Danny and, and, and those guys do it, and his staff do an incredible job offensively. They run a lot of sets. Nothing that we haven't seen throughout the course of, of Big Ten play and, and postseason. Uh, we've got to guard it. We can't get too in depth, but I think we we've got to hammer home uh, some of the uh, the important aspects of what we want to try to do uh, on both ends of the court. So uh, you know we'll go to the practice court here. We'll be we'll be active and and in, in terms of covering some of those things. And uh, you know it ultimately comes down to, to to good players making making plays on in a game like this and, and then handling um, all the intangible things. And then just a quick follow-up for the guys. Um, knowing that a trip to the Final Four would likely have to go through UConn, how much have you watched their tournament run so far? Go ahead, Marcus. Um, I haven't watched their tournament run very much. Um, I've watched a lot of games, honestly. I watch the exciting games and they've been blowing out teams. So, you know, I haven't really followed much attention to them. Uh, you know, we'll be watching a lot of film. We we have watched a lot of film. So, you know, we'll we'll have a good understanding for what they do. Anyone else? What's up? Go ahead, Johnny. John Fanta from Fox Sports. Uh, this is for any of the players. Marcus, you, you said uh, the other day that Coach, his approach is so professional. He treats you guys like a, a pro team. Uh, Yet, the, maybe the video of this tournament is Coach coming in the locker room last night. The aggressiveness, the agility, the mobility. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Coach, I envy you. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't move that fast if I was chasing a burger. Um, when you think about the way that, that he approaches that with the water gun, did you ever think that you'd be seeing the, the, these images uh, when you were getting recruited by him? <laughs> I don't know if I ever thought I'd see him the shirt off with the water gun. Uh, you know, I don't think that was that was a part of the the recruiting process. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, he he gets the rep of being the hard nosed guy, but you know, on the inside, he, he's really kind of soft. Soft. Yeah, he's kind of soft on the inside, you know, and he likes to. I've have never fun. been called that in my life, Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah, we just. That's you know, good. part of this run is just enjoying the moment, and you got to have fun. You know, we play basketball to have fun, and, you know, we love the game. So enjoy the moments and be locked in when we got to be locked in. Coach, can you reflect on where this is originating from? And uh, well, Did you, you ever think the, you'd be doing this? If you knew the grief I caught from my two daughters last night, and, and Adam Fletcher, our strength coach, has been told that he has to get busy with my ab workouts. Um, <laughs> I truly wanted to just be dry and have something to wear when I had to come meet with you all. But uh, um, no, it, it, we celebrate winning. We talk about winning a lot. And, and winning's really hard. We ask these guys to work their tail off every day. And, and it's our moniker, everyday guys. And, and I don't want winning to ever, ever just be a relief. Like, oh, next game. I don't want that. I want them to enjoy that moment for whatever it is, 30 minutes, whatever it is. And uh, our strength coach, uh, our staff have, have kind of come up with some different ideas. It's, it's fun. They're, they're, they're dragging me along for an unbelievable ride. I mean, this makes you never want to quit coaching when you're around guys that – it's not the winning. It's, it's who they are. Uh, you know, every one of these guys is a comedian in their own right. And um, uh, yet we know when to flip, flip the switch. So – yeah, they've got a 60-year-old man taking his shirt off and, uh, you know, doing his best dad bod. So um, it's 
probably not very good, not very, not, not very easy to look at. Hard to follow that one up. All right. Uh, we have a few more minutes for questions for our student athletes. If I, go ahead there. Jimmy Golan from the Associated Press. When you guys left the press conference the other night, you did something with the chairs. What was that? Is that a superstition, or is there a, is there a metaphor for it going on there or something like that? Go ahead. That's, Marcus? That's these two guys. Okay. These, these, these two guys got the chair game going. What, what's that all about? Uh, we just want to be respectful human beings and push in our chairs. <laughs> It's a great answer, though. We just, <laughs> must, did you see something? We just pushed in our chairs, right? Oh, we just we just want to be respectful. <laughs> All right, good answer. There we go. Right to the right, please. Coach Kyle Hightower from the Associated Press. You talked earlier about the challenges you guys have faced this season. Obviously, the one with Terrence is a unique one. But how much is having a veteran group around? You know, such a veteran group you've had this season help everyone navigate all the challenges you've had this season to get to this point. Yeah, the season's a roller coaster, and uh, it's 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 um, obviously Terrence's situation. We've had injuries. Uh, we we played start of the year where Coleman I don't know missed three or four games. Um, as well, you deal with illness. Uh, it's a roller coaster. It's a long season. It covers many many months. This group's maturity, uh, their connectivity, I use that word a lot, um, has, has allowed us to, to uh, be strong, grow stronger, persevere, come together more, uh, enjoy uh, the challenges um, through all of that, whether it was Nico breaking his foot or Amani's back injury, uh, Coleman's knee, um, the sicknesses we've had. Um, it, it just brings you all together, and, and, and through that is, is tremendous growth and, and, and connectivity that's, that's developed here. Are you in front? This is for Coleman and Brad. You guys had a daunting non-conference schedule, played Purdue a couple times, Tennessee. Is there anything about those games that, that prepare you for a team like UConn? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think, um, you know, those are two teams that we lost to, and uh, I feel like all three of those games that we played, um, they're really good teams, but I feel like we could have won. Um, so I feel like uh, we were able to learn from our mistakes. Um, and I feel like um, it definitely gave us a sense of what a feel for the NCAA tournament would be like. You know, really high level competitive games, um, great uh, defensive teams. Uh, you know, with Purdue, it was, uh, you know, getting out in transition, scoring the ball, um, guarding their actions. Um, and those are two teams that are really good teams. So I, I definitely think it was just a learning experience for us. And we were able to learn from mistakes. And um, it definitely did prepare us for these moments, for sure. You play the best to get ready to play the best. And never know, you know, again, um, we've never run away from scheduling. Uh, at Illinois, we're always going to play really, really good people. Uh, we're going to challenge ourselves on the road, uh, as we did with Tennessee. Um, game that could have gone either way. Um, and, and again, I think this team has, has grown a great deal since those, those games. Uh, we're rebound away against Purdue uh, and in a, in a hard-fought game, uh, which, which was our last loss. Uh, UConn is terrific. And uh, they're right there, up there with, with, with the best teams we've played. Um, but uh, we've seen them all in the Big Ten as well. And uh, we're uh, excited for the opportunity. Got time for one more with our guys right here in front. Yeah, Dave Borges, Hearst Connecticut Media. Quincy, uh, you played against UConn last year, if I'm not mistaken, out in Portland. Um, I know it probably seems like a long time ago. You were on a different team. They have a, a lot of different guys. but. Anything you can take from that game uh, going into tomorrow night as far as uh, what you know about UConn? I mean, yeah, they were a really good team. Uh, I think we lost that game by like 20 or 30. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're a great team. They, uh, their offense is really good. They play good def defensively too. But uh, like Coach said, we just got to be focused on, on our game, uh, how we've been defending. Uh, I'm going to have to be really physical with them defensively and take care of uh, defensive rebounds so we can push in transition. But uh, it's all about us. Awesome. Coleman, Ty, 
Marcus Quincy, you guys can head back. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. We'll take any further questions for, for Coach? Right here in front. Get a mic. Yeah. Uh, Brad Domamori from... If you want to take a second, coach, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Coleman knocked himself out back here, by the way. <laughs> go, ahead, go, ahead. go ahead. Yeah, yeah Brad Domamori from the Hartford Current. Uh, various coaches through the years have, have offered the idea that the regional final, the Elite Eight, is the toughest game, the hardest game, the most pressure-packed game of the tournament to get through. I was wondering if in your experiences or conversations, with, if, that, what, if you had any thoughts on that idea. Yeah, I've been in one um, when I was at Kansas State, and um, it was Butler's first trip to the Final Four. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know about that. I think they're all – I think the opening game can be really, really hard. Um, you know, none of them are easy. Uh, you, you, you've got to be prepared. I think there's a sense, I can see where some people think there's a sense of relief to get to a Final Four. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, you know, every, everybody's got a challenge. They're quick turns. Um, you, you know, you've got to flip the script mentally. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's still an unbelievable opportunity to, to do something great. And, and we're one of eight uh, that, are, that are still standing with an opportunity to to, to, to go to Arizona. Right here, Coach? Yeah, Doug Bouchon, Rivals.com. Coach, you, you get to this this uh, level or this, you know, at, in the tournament, it seems like all these games turn into possession games late. Do you find yourself uh, calling more plays, dialing up more plays from the bench rather than just letting the ball find Mar Marcus or find Terrence? In certain situations, you know, I think that we understand that, that you know, we try to, you know, in league play, we, we – tell our team 75% of all the game is going to be two possessions. Uh, so we try to prepare for those and, and have ideas. Every game's got a different identity to it. Um, last night was no different. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to try to go to a matchup. We went to Dane quite a bit with, uh, uh, with, with TJ on the bench, with fouls. Um, you know, I don't worry as much about the offensive end as I do the defensive end uh, sometimes. So it, it can get fairly complex in terms of the, the chess game that you, that you play in late game situations. Right here in front, Coach. Brad, what makes UConn so unique and so challenging? Really good players, and they're really well coached. And I mean, it's, it's really um, – and, and the fact that they – their point guard got six offensive rebounds yesterday. Um, you know, they, they, they punish you on the glass. And, you know, we try to do the same thing. Uh, we try to make you hurt on the offensive glass. Um, they run in transition. They get a ton of threes in transition. We love to run in transition. We love to score under seven seconds. Um, you know, so it's, it's, it's some mirroring styles. Uh, I've got tremendous respect for, for how hard they play. Um, you know, they've got a little bit of everything in terms of Castle being an elite defender. Um, you know, Caravan at 6'8", at 6'9", six, six, is, is, is just a, a deadly three-point shooter, and especially in transition. So, um, you know, they've got size, they've, and, and, and they play really fast, and they play really hard. Front, right, front here, Coach, to the left. Gavin Key from the London Day. I just wonder your impressions are Steph Castle. He's a freshman kind of making an impact when, the, when the, with a lot of older teams these days. Yeah, he's not kind of making an impact. He's making a big impact. He's uh, um, he's he's an elite defender, elite. Um, he competes really hard. It's very hard to find freshmen that play that hard, that know how to play that hard. Uh, usually, they've been coddled and 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 told how great they are for the first six years of their being in basketball, so they think they're great and arrived. That one knows how to play really, really hard. Uh, he's a great slasher. His offensive game uh, is developing, but he's impactful. Um, the job he did on Boo Booey in our league, and in, in, from our league in the NCAA tournament game, was uh, was, was very impressive. So, um, 
just really impressed with him. Danny's got him playing so hard, and that's that's impressive for a freshman. Back right here, Coach. Uh, hey, Brad, Rob Doster, Field of 68. Seems like your team is pretty uptight and nervous for uh, for this game tomorrow. We are. We're, we're jittery. What is the what is the value of having a group that's the, this loose? It doesn't seem like the moment is going to be too much for them. Age, old, maturity. Again, you know, I mean, Marcus. Marcus is a 2,000-point scorer. He's been in, you know, Quincy's played in 160 games. There's nothing that they haven't seen. Uh the question was asked. Quincy's seen UConn. I, you know, it's um, there's just some some value in in that. Uh, you know, it's not like you're running a bunch of young guys out here who you don't know what they're going to do. I, I know what this group's going to do. I know how they're going to react. Uh, we've been through the trials and tribulations of a of a long season, so you gain confidence from that. Uh, but uh, Coleman's been four years. Ties in his second. Uh, the, the other two guys are transfers with tons of experience, so I'm, you know, they've won me over, uh, and they and they're all very, 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 very competitive. Right now. here you go, John. Fox Sports, um, Brad. When you say you've been through the trials and tribulations, what's a trial where every coach experiences one of those with their team, if not a couple of those, where you were most impressed? With how this group responded, and perhaps it's easy. Learned That's even, easy. Learned That's easy. More. That's easy. And uh, uh, Penn State at Penn State, um, we were we were just uh, uh, we had prepared terribly uh, for multiple days uh, for that game, and not knocking them, they we we they moved the game into their old arena. Uh, it was a sellout crowd. It was it was amped, um, and we didn't play very well, but had a ten point lead, and literally watched it just disintegrate in thirty seconds. And bad plays, dumb plays, bad fouls, uh, you name it, we did it. And I didn't have to go into the locker room and say a word. I was calm. I was. They knew, but they also knew I was going to get things right. And and. Uh, um, the next day or two weren't, 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 weren't fun for them, but they were get right moments. And, uh, that's been a defining moment, um, all year because that, that group, this group knew, they knew, they knew, they knew what they knew the preparation leading into it. We didn't deserve to win that game. And, uh, uh, we tricked it off. Good. Jerry. Jimmy Golan from the Associated Press. You mentioned the experience that your players have, and they're, they're up. UConn's obviously coming off a national championship. How hard with the portal? How hard is it now to kind of build a team that you know? If you look at them, they can just come back and say, "Let's try it again. Let's run it back." To not just have one year, but have a, a run of success. He's got a great staff. Uh, I think we do too. I think we've had we've found success in the portal at a very very high level, um, based on character based on not just talent, not just, uh, I think it's character. And, and I think that uh, you look at Spencer, uh, character, tough, they fit. Uh, their staff has done an incredible job of evaluating the guys that, that, that fit them. But they've also done it with, with, with really good recruiting. Um, you know, we've got great carryover in our program. Um, and, and so we've added the right pieces. But uh, you know it's got to be the right mesh, and it's and in our case, it's it's just it's been about yeah they got to be good, but but it's the right character pieces, and and uh, you know those two guys, Justin Harmon, uh, have just have been unbelievable this year and fit in. Right here to your left, coach. Coach Will Charlton here, SB Nation. This run that Terrence has been on, twenty five or more points in the last seven games. Have you seen anything like this in your time as a coach? Well, I was an assistant with Michael Beasley. Mike was pretty good. Um, but he's doing it, and we don't run much to him. I mean, we're not running a lot of action to him. Um, you know, Marcus gets a ton of the attention. Coleman gets a ton of the attention in terms of offensive stuff. But um, it, it's it's, um, it's I've used the term organic. It just kind of happens. He finds it, um, and uh, but he's 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 been great all year. He was great early, and like you said, he had a few struggles. Um, on his return, um, that was just him not wanting to mess things up. 
but uh, yeah, we, you know, he had 29 last night. I didn't know it, and he played 29 minutes and missed five free throws and some wide open threes. Otherwise, he could have had a 40 point night. But uh, he's he's a he's a special player, special talent. Right here, coach. Hi, Tara Sullivan from the Boston Globe. Um, in the big picture, college basketball has withstood plenty, right? We talked about it the other day, one and dones or NIL transfer portal. Um, I just wonder personally how it feels that gambling has become such a ubiquitous presence in the game, something that it used to be so taboo if it bothers you, if it concerns you, just how you feel about just what a, almost like a partner in some ways, what a big part it's become in, in the college game and in sports in general. Concerns me a lot. Concerns me a lot. I, we we have the one of the greatest um, games, games, and and uh, it's 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 um, the competitive integrity. I use that word a lot. Uh, can never be challenged. I'm I'm so much in favor of of um, what the NCAA is doing. Mr. Baker, in terms of coming out against prop betting, um, I, I think that's uh, we we in the Big Ten, uh, our commissioner, uh, our athletic directors put in place uh, this year uh, injury reports before games, um, huge. Um, so I, I think it's a it's a it's it's something we're always going to have to keep educating on. I think we're we're naive if we don't think that it's not happening everywhere, it is. Uh, but I think we have to do our part to, to educate our young people. Uh, I think we have to, to continue to, to, to do everything we can to be preventive. We're not a pro franchises where we have, you know, drive into buildings and drive into gated communities and nobody ever knows. We got college kids wearing boots in dorms, you know, and, 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 and being seen. So um, I think we've got to be, um, um, in the process of continual education, I know at the University of Illinois we do it constantly and uh, making making our student athletes aware of it. Thank you, Coach. Any other questions for Coach? Thank you. Thank you so much. Good luck tomorrow. We'll be joined by UConn head coach Stan Hurley in the starting five here at three forty. Student athletes are going to break out rooms. UConn is in there from 4.05 to 4.20. When the breakout rooms start up in the locker room. When the locker room. Yeah. Yep.
What was that on Wednesday? Yeah. Yes. Yes, I was. Yes. I was looking at the transcript. And I it was what. Wednesdays was pretty interesting with Danny. He was, it was a good one though, one for the ages. <laughs> yeah, he's been full of them this week.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining once again. Just a quick reminder, silence your phones. First and last name, media affiliation. Wait for a microphone asking a question. Recording press conferences on phones and cameras is prohibited. We'll have uh, head coach Shane Hurley, Stefan Donovan, Alex, Tristan and Cam with us here. They will be here for the first 20 minutes till about 4 o'clock. If you could please uh, try and gear questions towards them initially, and we'll let them head back after 20 minutes. Then we have uh, Coach Hurley here till 4.20. Thank you.
it's cold. That's right. Thanks for joining us, fellas. Coach Hurley, whenever you're settled, just want to give some opening thoughts before we open up to questions. That'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, obviously, uh, you know, excited to get uh, another opportunity this year uh, in an Elite Eight game to uh, you know, to play a really high quality team and uh, you have a chance to, uh, you know, 40 minutes or however long it takes for your chance to get back to a Final Four. Excellent. Thank you. Open up the questions here. Open up. Dave Borgers, Hearst, Connecticut Media. Dan, um, d does Illinois remind you of any teams you've played this year or any Big East teams with you know their physicality or their, their offensive punch or anything like that? Is there, can you draw any similarities between any teams you've played? I think um, yeah, there's, there's different elements with the, with the way that we, uh, the way that they space the court. Um, you know, with, with, you know, with Marquette um, in terms of the offensive end. You know, although you know Marquette is unique, um, you know some some defensive principles from maybe from Creighton. You know, there's just like different elements. Obviously, we you know you, we we uh, you know, we we watched their game versus Marquette in the non-conference. You know, the one that they played at Illinois. So there was um, you know some some familiarity uh, you know coming in. Right in the middle, John Fans of Fox Sports. This is for any of the players. Uh, we've talked with Coach quite a bit, and Coach has talked with us quite a bit about his uh, list of superstitions. What do you guys think of, of uh, Coach's superstitions? And have you developed any? Have you developed any uh, as a result of, of all of the things he has? Um, I mean, whatever works, works. So, I mean, it's, it's working well for, you know, his entire coaching career. So, um why not continue it? So, I mean, I've definitely picked on the superstitious stuff, whether that's with socks or um, Cam and I waiting for each other to get in the hotel room. Like, I have to go first, then he's got to wait, and then I got it, then he's got to go. So, um, oh, yeah, it's just weird superstition. <laughs> he knows what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. That's true. He knows what I'm talking about. Anything else? All right, go ahead. There in the middle. Uh, Matt Norlander, CBS Sports. Uh, just a quick one for Dan, then one for Tristan. I, I, genuine question here, because you got the thing with the M&Ms. The M&M blue is a different shade than Illinois blue, so is that going to be a factor when you decide what we're doing before this game tomorrow? I didn't even know. I, I, I thought I was safe, because I, I, I didn't even realize they had the blue in there. I was so focused on the orange. Okay, all right. So, okay, you hadn't thought about it. Not a, not a full scout there. Tristan, um, <laughs> This team this year versus the team from last year, what element is here that gives you uh, confidence that maybe was missing or just maybe a dial down when, it, when we talk about being a team like Illinois, getting to the Final Four? What's the biggest dynamic difference from this group versus last season? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if there's, you know, besides the, you know, players, obviously, but um, last year we had the, you know, same formula, defense rebounding, uh, sharing the ball that got us to a national championship, and we carried that over to this year. And we've had a successful year, so um, I don't see that many differences besides the players. Um, we got the same, you know, we do the same routine, we do the same scout, and, you know, we prepare the same. So I wouldn't say there are too many big differences. Thanks, Tristan. Hearing back? This is for Coach uh, Sam Knox, WPRI in Providence. Uh, you talk about culture uh, a lot. What's it like in real time to see that happen in, in such dominating fashion, especially in the tournament? Yeah, um, just the... You know the the culture piece. Um, it's it's all about just getting the right right the right people together, like minded people, um, people that are willing to sacrifice, people that are willing to care. Uh, you know, care about the group. Um, you know, you know, sacrifice. Uh, you know, parts of themselves uh, for the for the overall success of the group. Because um, everyone's going to get what they deserve in the end. You know, there's no more secrets. You know, players that are. NBA level players, they're going to get drafted. You're going to play in the NBA. You know, it's not like it was years ago where there's these guys that you know, you know don't don't end up making it because uh, you know they, they were some hidden secret. You know, everyone's going to end up playing at the level uh, that the talent dictates. Um, you know, so while you're wearing the college uniform, you know, play for the win. And we got guys that that play to win. Thanks, Coach Jimmy. Jimmy Golan, Associated Press, Donovan. Uh, Coach talked the other day about you coming in after last year and saying you weren't ready, you wanted to come back. What went into that decision? What did you think wasn't ready and, and was um, was having the chance to win two in a row any part of that decision? Yeah, I mean, you know, 
I love I love you know UConn. I love being here. I love you know the guys in the locker room. I love the coaching staff. Um, you know I'm, you know I really, you know feel like I wanted to come back and you know just prove what I could do. And you know the college games as fun as it gets. And you know winning a national championship. You know definitely wanted to try to compete for another one. And you know just because I realized you know how fun it is and you know how great winning is. So you know I just wanted to come back and you know try to battle and just do it with a new team. Was it more about the experience, or was there a part of their game, your game that you still wanted to work on? Um, you know, everything. You know, obviously, you know, there's always room for improvement. You know, obviously, I wanted to get better. I always wanted to, you know, I just want to do a new team. And you know, like I said, I love UConn. I love being here. And you know, I just want to just keep winning. Good job. All right, guys. Let's play a little game here. Uh, let's describe your coach in one word. Each one of you. All right. I'll start if you want. You want me to start, Donovan? Sure. Yeah. Lunatic. I like that one. Who said that? Right? You said I that? Said, no, I no, no, I said it. Let them say it. Why do you want it? You're prompting them. They can't them. use that word, though. They gotta, you, you gotta try to, you're taking them in a direction, come out though. with a different word. You're like leading them. No, not at all. I would never lead. Who starts? Go ahead, Steph. Let's, let's start down with you, Stefan. We'll go down the road. Um, loud. Uh, competitive. Passionate. And you took my word. Oh, <laughs> Uh, relentless. A winner. Let's go, boys. You got my back. <laughs> you got my back. That's right. Culture. <laughs> right here, then I'll go ahead. Hey, guys. Uh, Trevor House with the Boston Globe. Question for uh, Tristan and Alex. Just curious about Cam's versatility. Obviously, he's a shooter. Everyone knows that. But his passing, his playmaking, can you just speak to the way he affects the game in so many ways? Yeah, I mean, he could beat he could beat anybody in so many different ways, whether that's his shot or just playmaking for others. And um, he really just helps us create a new look offensively and just, you know, teams worry about him so much. And, you know, he's extremely unselfish, so he's either going to make the shot or, you know, make the unselfish play. And um, he's just super easy and super fun with to play on, on offense. Yeah, I mean, Tim's a, uh, Cam's a great teammate. You know, he, he wants, he's going to do whatever it takes to win. Uh, he dives on the floor. He gets steals. He moves the ball. You know, he obviously he shoots well. And, uh, with his shooting skill, he, he can get to the basket and make plays. So uh, he's an all-around great player, and he's, he's been good for our team this year. Thanks, Right here in front. Uh, Zach Brazil in your post. Dan, did you have superstitions when you were a player? And what were they? Well, that's a long time ago. Um, no. I just think you have more time as a coach. You're, you're in the locker room by yourself, especially as a head coach. You're in the locker room by yourself for a while, just by yourself, and you have a lot of time by yourself. So it just it, it, it leads to the, these things piling up. What about St. Benedict's? Yeah, I mean, that started there. I think the M&M's probably started there. Anything else? There? Um, just prayer, you know. I, I pray, too, right before um, we talk to these guys. They go out at the eight-minute mark. I, I, go, I go and say a quick prayer. Um, so my faith's always been real important to me. You're in the back. Tim. Tara Sullivan from the Boston Globe. Cam, you've probably been asked this before, but the comparison of kind of Big East basketball, what you went through this season, versus Big Ten basketball, you're going to play them. So, yeah, just it, are they similar? Did one harder, more physical, anything, any comparison you might make? Yeah, I, I would say the physicality is pretty similar. Um, you know, big, strong, athletic people uh, in both leagues. Uh, I think the Big East probably a little bit faster. The, the Big Ten probably a little more of a, a half-court offense kind of a league. Um, but like I said, a very, both very physical leagues. Here in front. Uh, Dom Amori, Hartford Current. Uh, for Alex and, and Dan also, if you could weigh in on this. but. Uh, it's been said in the past, Gino, among others, that this regional final, the eight, is the hardest obstacle along the way to the final, to, to the championship. This is the toughest game. I was wondering, you know, Alex, you went through this last year with Gonzaga. What were, what were the feelings like going into that game? And then, Dan, if you could maybe speak to that as well. Yeah, we were super energetic just knowing how hard it is to make it to the Elite Eight and just, you know, the energy that surrounds the Elite Eight. So we were super excited. And, um, making it back to the Elite Eight, it's special. And, you know, it's hard to do it two times in a row. But I think every game is hard in March Madness. The first round, second round, all of them are hard. And they all, you know, equal the same value. You win, you move on. So really, you're just super energized and excited about all of them. And, you know, you're just blessed to be in the opportunities in these type of games. Yeah. I mean, first round games are rough. Um, 
Yeah, I, mean, I remember last year, uh, you know, pretty nerve wracking going into this one with everything that's on the table. Um, and then going into the national championship game, not wanting to lose, <laughs> losing the national championship game. But this year, for us, I think feels different. You know, we broke through last year. We've established a level. Maybe we feel a little bit less pressure as an organization because we feel like we've established a level now that uh, of where our program's at. That um, you know we're, we're going to be in this spot moving forward. Um, obviously, this year and and moving forward. So. I don't think we feel the same anxiety. We have tremendous respect for our opponent, know how hard tomorrow is going to be. But um, you know, we've established a level that we expect to be back to. Uh, great. Uh, Dan, Mike Anthony from Hearst. What do you recall about the conversations with Donovan coming off of last year uh, and his need to come back this year? And what do you think of his body of work this year and, and his development despite some injuries? Yeah, I think with, with Donovan, you know, the, listen, the, obviously NIL and um, you know, has changed things for, you know, for for college athletes. Um, you know, th there's no rush to get to, you know, professional sports, the NBA, the NFL, uh, w with what you can earn as a college athlete. If you're physically and mentally and emotionally not ready to go into a man's world, and like your game is not there, you're emotionally, you know, in, in terms of your uh, maturation, not ready to be in that world, like. With grown ass men, like you know, fighting for your life on a on a daily basis in that league, then you know you should return to college until you're prepared to like be a rotation player in the NBA, where you can have a long and successful career. The objective is not getting drafted to the NBA. The objective is to have a 12 to 15 year career in the NBA. And Donovan wasn't, you know, wasn't ready for that last year. And, and he was very, he's a very self-aware kid. Um, you could see his impact once he's healthy. Um, he wasn't healthy to start the year. Now he's healthy. Uh, he's in great form. And uh, um, and there's few players in the country that impact the game like him. Where to the right? I'll follow up with Donovan. Donovan. Um either in the context of this tournament run or the entire season, uh, have you and your teammates taken this season as a title defense, like what you won last year, you are trying to retain what is, what is yours, or has it been, you know, draw a line, blank slate, this is all about moving forward and we're not necessarily using, you know, what we already have as, uh, as extra motivation? Yeah, um, definitely, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you know, after the summer, um, you know, when we got all the new guys in, from, you know, the freshmen and, you know, Cam, you know, really just, you know, leaving that in last season and focusing on, you know, doing it with a new team. And um, we really, it's nothing about, like, defending. It's really just trying to, you know, go out and, you know, win another one and, you know, doing whatever we can to do that. And, you know, it's a special group of guys that, you know, it's coached at the highest level. And, you know, we're, we're just ready for, you know, what's ahead of us. Go ahead, John. Uh, I'm going to give... Coach, chance to answer this, and then the four other players next to Stefan Castle, I'll give you guys a chance to think. When did you know that this freshman would be the, the perfect fit for your program, and, and what was your first encounter or two like with this kid? Coach? For, for, yeah, I, I think, um, you know, just you know, during the unofficial visits, official visits, you know, you spend time around him, you, 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 you Get to know Quan and and uh, and Stacy and all the people that Steph has around them, the physical attributes, the traits, um, the competitiveness, you know, the love of the game, all that stuff is there. But you know, for me, it's when you spend time with him on the visit and you know that the family he's got the right uh, inner circle around him. Yeah, I mean, you know, really his official visits, um, just. You know, the dinners at, you know, the official visit dinners, just hanging around with him on campus. You know, his family's great. You know, he's a good kid. And, um, you know, he's, you know, the best defender that, you know, that you see when, you know, we put him on the best players every game. And, you know, he's he's a special player, special kid. Anyone else? Tristan. Yeah. Um, I mean, Coach, they do a great job of recruiting the right players. So, you know, obviously if Coach wants somebody to be on our team and he says they're going to help us, they're pretty much going to help us. Uh, my first interaction with Steph was, um, I think on Instagram, honestly. We were talking about uh, the jersey number. Uh, talking about getting number two, he couldn't have it. Nah. But um, besides that, yeah, he's a, he's a great teammate, great guy on and off the court, and uh, glad he's our teammate this year. Thanks, guys. Here in the front left. Joe Ruta, Hartford Current. Uh, 
Dan, could you speak to the different personalities that you have in the backcourt? Obviously, Tristan and Cam and Steph and Haas. And, mm. and how have they been able to mesh? Well, it just, I think, um, you know, I, I think getting, you know, players with a, with a lot of life to them and, and, you know, trying to avoid, like, you know, zombies and deadheads on your roster. Um, just, you know, outgoing, you know, different types of personality. I think it helps you in these bigger moments. I think uh, that's something that we spent a lot of time thinking about with, you know, a, a couple of those years where we didn't play our best in March was, you know, get guys that are alive that, that aren't going to shrink, um, you know, when the lights get bright in March. And uh, it's, it's a very diverse locker room, and uh, I know they have a lot of, a lot of fun in there, and it, 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 it's, it's, a lively, it's a lively place. Got about three minutes left. There's two and a half each here. Go ahead in the middle. Uh, Rob Doster, Field of 68s for Tristan and Alex. Coach has uh, said multiple times that Donovan's as impactful of a player as there is in college basketball. I'm just curious, in your eyes, what is that impact? I think it starts on the defensive end with him. I mean, when he was out for those five games in the middle of the season, we really weren't as good defensively. We didn't have the rim protection. We didn't have like that presence inside that um, <clears throat> you know intimidated other teams of attacking the paint. So. Really, I think it started with the defensive end with him, and then offensively, I mean, lob throw at post ups. He really opens up everything else for the guards and the shooters. So, um, I mean, it was really both ends, but I think more importantly, it was on the defensive end we needed him. Yeah, I mean, he pretty much covered it all. Like, it starts with defense. You know, he affects all shots around the rim. He gets good rebounds. I think the most underrated uh, part of his game is he's well for me personally uh, helps me out. He's a good screen setter. You know, he. I'm open off all his screens, and you know if it's on the ball or off the ball, he sets great screens, and you know um, just throw it up to him, he's gonna go get it. So, yeah, he's he's the most impactful player in the country. We would say so. John, did you have a follow? -up? You're good. Okay. Do we have any questions for uh, for a five up here before we let him head back? No, you guys are all set. Coach, you can stick around for a few more questions. It'd be great. Thank you. Right here to the right. Stay a few. Stay a few. Stay a few. I got you. No, you're good. Stay. Go ahead, Jimmy. Dan, as you may be aware, it's been a long time since anyone's repeated. And I was just wondering, with all the stuff that's going on in the sport these days, do you think it's getting harder to do that with the transfer portal and all that stuff? Or do you think it's maybe going to get easier because you can just bring someone in? Oh, it's harder. Um, it, it, it's way harder. Forget the fact, I mean, coaching's harder. The, the game is way more sophisticated, right? I mean, just the players are more skilled, they're more versatile. So many, um, you know, different types of teams with different, you know, tactics offensively, defensively. Obviously, you're managing your roster with the with the portal, with NIL. Um, I mean, for us, we, you know, we, we've, you know, you better be a more skilled coach these days because you're dealing with a lot more stuff. And then just for, you know, for us, I think, uh, you know, we, we – uh, We've made it look easy um, in, in these past two tournaments, but it's been it's hard. You know, we, we we do the hard things really, really well, like the defense, the rebounding. You know, the way that we play at the offensive end of the court. Um, you know, um, so yeah, I mean, it, it's tough. It's not it's not easier. It's going to get tougher. Um, you know, in, unless you know somebody isn't you know. So we get it like a commissioner or something <laughs> that gets this thing a little bit, uh, you know, more, more organized and under control. We could really use a commissioner. We've got such an incredible sport. We got the greatest sport event that this country has on a yearly basis that catch, captures the imagination of the whole country. You know, casuals, not non-sport fans, everybody. Everyone's got a bracket. You know, you got this incredible product that's marketed horribly outside of March. Um, you know, it's an incredible sport and. Uh, yeah, you better be a better coach, and uh, we need a commissioner. Good. Good. Dan, Matt Norland of CBS Sports. Uh, you've been uh, frequent in your outspokenness about your opposition to the transfer portal being open during the tournament. I think a lot of people in your profession would share that opinion. I'm curious, in your position, UConn, uh, if you have found yourself in the past couple of weeks in the rare spot where instead of having a staff that has to work the portal, work the back channels, if anything, You've had people approach either you, your staff, and say, "Hey, how can we how can we get our guys involved in what you're doing?" If you've had to deal with that, if you've almost had to push the brakes on on everyone uh, as you try and do this and kind of keep all your focus on your team. Yeah, we're um, you know we have Tom Moore in a 
in a, in a, in a pseudo GM role. Um, you know, obviously trying to project out what the what the roster is going to look like. Obviously, you know, we, we have players that we know that won't return. Then you have some some younger players that that you know um, are going to have heavy heavy interest. Um, you know, in, in in terms of Steph and, and Donovan and and AK. So, um, but. W- w- those things we're, we're kind of having casual conversations about that, but we really are really just trying to focus on next practice, you know, you know studying the heck out of the, this Illinois team, staying in the moment, staying present um, with that. It, it hasn't hurt us in the past. That's the way we've always handled things. You know, we're not good at tampering or cheating. We've never tried that. Um, and, and we've still been very successful. So, um, you know, we, we want to play out the season, and then obviously, you know, we'll deal with our roster situations. But um, you know, we, we just as a program, you know, we, we want to have a high level culture and and the respect of our peers uh, to not be one of those programs that's, you know, trying to steal players off other teams in season. Just a quick follow up with that, because last year, you know, you spoke on how you had to take a few of these Zoom interviews with these transfers, like. Uh, have you put your, you know, foot down, line in the sand, the whole thing on like, you know, if you're fortunate enough to, to go to Arizona, like we're not doing that again, or is it a state of the business where like it's almost out of your control? For me to, to make... For you specifically in this team, like, you know, that, that must not have been like what you wanted to do a year ago when you're trying to win a title and you're, yeah. and you're hopping, you, you, you got assistance hopping on a Zoom. <laughs> I'm wondering if you're, if you're intent on not having to repeat that or if it's just an unavoidable reality here. So what we've tried to do is like as, as players have, have gone in that... There may be an interest in based on how some personnel things go for us, either portal or early entry draft. Um, you know, we've had like you know Tom, who's acting as a pseudo, you know, GM for us, maybe making an initial call of interest. Um, but yeah, I'm not actively. I think I've I've called a high school player that's available um, and had a had a phone conversation. But I just think it's our practice. Um, you know, for me and Kamani and Luke uh, to, to lock in on team and, and to take this season as far as we can go. And, and you know, if we if we lose players uh, because we're moving slower, um, again, it hasn't hurt us the past two years. Back left, Coach. Dan, you talked about a lot of what college basketball as a whole is facing. <clears throat> the issue of gambling mm. being so out there for those of us of a certain age, that's strange enough to kind of – live in a space where gambling is, is so present in there. I'm, I'm curious what you, if, how you feel about that and if, if gambling to you is a threat because like the kids are, you know, could be targeted by people or if it's because they're vulnerable and then you're looking at, you know, bad stuff, point shaving, things like that. What do you see as the threats? I think you worry about the people getting close to the players. Um, you know, anyone involved in your program, whether it's student managers or what have you, I just think the antennas are up. You know, now with these play, now with players, you know, with this NIL uh, opportunity, you know, it, it's not like they need to bet, uh, you know, on on games in college with that insider information because they need the cash. You know, the, these kids now are, are in a position, uh, um, you know, to, to begin investing money, taking care of family, having family travel. NIL's been great. Um, but, yeah, you worry about the people around the players and just how easily accessible it is. I mean, we, you know, we, we play and practice uh, at the XL Center not very far from a window where we could see, you know, the, you know, the, the, the gambling going on. So. Thanks, Coach. Your front left. Uh, Gavin Keith in London Day. Dan, how do you go about building a strong connection with your players, and how important is that to your team's success? Time. Uh, you know, you, you invest every second um, that you can in them that the NCAA allows, uh, both on the court, um, you know, and and off the court. It, it truly, you, you just pour everything you have into them, your family, your um, family is intertwined with your program. Um, and um, I think players sense that, they feel that. You know, my players will accept the hard coaching from me. 
um, because uh, and our staff because uh, you know they know how much we love them. They know how much we're trying to prepare them, toughen them up, teach them, help them grow as men, develop new skills quickly. All those things that are going to add value to their lives, and, and we're relentless for them. You know, we're, we're literally giving everything we got to them while they're on campus. Now, I wouldn't want to play for me for 10 years, um, 12 years. I mean, I wouldn't want to play for this staff for 8, 10, 12, 15 years. It, you know, we, we, we go hard for these guys while they're on campus, and that's why I think you, you see the bond the way it is. It's, in some cases, it's, you know, it's 8 months, it's 10 months, it's 2 or 3 years. you got to do that at a sprinter's pace, you know, um, because it's such a short window where you're trying to prepare these guys for the rest of their lives, success, the stuff that they need to learn as men. Let's go front, front center here. Dan, what's the single most important or maybe the two or three most important pieces of advice that either Jim Calhoun or one of the other you know, veteran coaches that you talk to about handling the later stages of, of March? Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, certainly shortening up practices. I think that um, you know, trusting your team. I think from Coach Calhoun and and and, and Gino, have really tried to hammer that home. Uh, you know, with with me, as the season's gone on, sh shortening those practices. Um, and, and then I think, um, you know, the, you know, the the the, the leadership, the public persona. Um, I, I think Gino and. Coach Calhoun have had a heavy influence on how I try to carry myself this time of year as a UConn coach, the, the, the confidence that you've got to display both in-house um, and in front of you guys because, um, because of what, what UConn represents in March and April. Over here, Coach. Jimmy Golan from the Associated Press. Uh, to follow up on what you mentioned about Donovan the other day, what, what is it about his game that – you saw could be could improve if he stuck around and have, what kind of growth have you seen from him and then kind of how remarkable is it for you that a guy can look at the NBA and say no nah, I'm good I'll wait yeah I mean you, you obviously all the defensive things and now that he's healthy all the movement and the ball screen defense plus the rim protection he's got a unique skill set for somebody that's seven two seven three um, you, you could see somebody that's very comfortable like passing and handling the ball away from the basket, which is so critical uh, in the NBA game today with the five out. Um, and, you know, I think um, if you watch him, you know, in pregame warm-ups, you could see that the shooting eventually at the uh, – as he gets into an NBA organization, you know, you, you'll see the shooting with him. You'll see a guy that eventually will be able to step away and make shots. People see Jokic and what he looks like when he's 25, 26 years old. You know, when he was 20, he wasn't making, you know, 24-foot threes and doing all the things that you're seeing him do the last couple of years. So, you know, Donovan's, um, you know, Donovan has an ability to, uh, um, to develop uh, new skills rapidly and um, – you know, you'll you'll see that um, you know when he gets to the NBA. Was it remarkable to you that he was able to, you know, put off some instant gratification? Yeah, um, but you know, he, he comes. Uh, you know, a, a great family raised him, and um, and in Bristol's kept him humble and grounded. And you know, he he he's Connecticut kid. He loves Connecticut. Um, you know, he loves college. You know, once these guys leave college, they're not going to be on teams like this again that feel the way we feel about each other ever again. You're going to go into a, an NBA organization, and it's going to be it's going to be business. It's it's going to be it's going to be man. You know what? Um, you know that there's it's not going to be like this in, in terms of the way the group feels about each other, the brotherhood, the camaraderie. And I, I think, you know, he wanted another year of that. Go ahead, man. Well, one more for you, Dan. Um, it has not been a recurring trope for this team to win close games. You had a you know, perhaps <laughs> there. But I am curious how you are trying to guard against or prepare your team for if it's caught in a one-possession game with two minutes to go tomorrow night. Um, or if, if you – do, does you and your staff have any control over your team's composure when it comes to that? How much does that weigh on you if you wind up getting, you know, if you're not blowing them out with, with, with at the under four, you know? Yeah. Um, well, we've played under pressure on a daily basis because, 
you know, our, our, our practice is very intense. So I, I do think that helps us um, to a degree. But, you know, at, at MSG, that St. John's game, you know, that was not um, – you know that, that that game was tight, and um, and we made plays later in the second half in an electric building to get it to double figures. Um, you know the Marquette game in the, in the Big East Finals was was not uh, a runaway for us. It was a tight game that we got separation in, in the second half. Um, you know we've played close games during the year. Uh, you know I, I just think um, you know the expect. Um, you know, the expectation, in, you know, in, in the game versus Illinois. Illinois is one of the best teams in the country. You know, one of the best teams in the country. We, we expect a 40-minute war going into every game that we go into. You know, I know you'll see, you know, the end of that clip when I came into the locker room and said, we just keep blowing these teams out. Well, they missed the first part of that, which was, man, I don't know how we're blowing these teams out in this setting. You guys are special. So we go into every game, you know, San Diego State, we didn't think we'd be plus 27 on the backboard versus that rebounding team. We didn't think that we would beat a, you know, a team like that, um, you know, that beat the team that, you know, that beat the Auburn team that everyone felt like could make a deep, deep run in this tournament by, you know, by 30. So um, you go into it thinking it's going to be a full 40-minute war, um, you know, and, and, and we've systematically been able to break teams down. That's about five more minutes. Go ahead to the right. Wayne Norman, UConn Sports Network. Dan, you just talked rebounding. These are two of the top 10 rebound margin teams in the country. How do you see the rebounding battle playing out tomorrow, and where do you maybe have an edge? Yeah, it's going to be a bloody battle. Um, it's a rebounding war tomorrow, and it's going, to be a, it's going to be a bloody one. You know, the Big East and the Big Ten, two of the toughest leagues. Um, you know, you get, you get real men playing in these two conferences. So, uh, you know, when the ball goes up, you know, whoever's fastest to it, whoever makes that first violent contact and then continues to improve their position, they're an excellent rebounding team. Um, we're an excellent rebounding team. We both go to the offensive glass. You know, I think tomorrow's going to be just, I think it's going to be a fun game. I think two, the two top offenses in the country, um, you know, play, NBA players up and down, you know, both rosters. Um, you know, I know they're hungry to break through and get to a Final Four. You know, we're, we're hungry to get back to a Final Four. So, you know, we're, we're two, of the, you know, two of the truly best teams in the country. Anything else other for Coach? All right. Thanks so Thank much. You. Good luck tomorrow. Yep. Oh, perfect. Plenty of time. Thanks so much. Sure.